If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you. If you can trust yourself when all men doubt you but make allowance for their doubting too. If you can wait and not be tired by waiting or being lied about don't deal in lies or being hated don't give way to hating and yet don't look too good nor talk too wise. Bateman's is looked after by the National Trust, a charitable body whose purpose is preservation of old buildings and areas of outstanding natural beauty. What is this? It's just like a cafe? Or? Yeah, I mean, it serves now as a cafe. This is the tea room. The National Trust base is always having tea room. Okay. Ice cream. Ice cream room, yeah, that's really nice. <laughs> Ice cream door. <laughs> Bateman's was bought by Kipling in 1902, who lived here until his death in 1936. When he died, his widow Caroline became a custodian of the place, and in her will, it passed to the National Trust. Here is Rolls-Royce Phantom Mark I, one of a handful of motor vehicles under custodianship of National Trust. It was purchased by Kipling for £2,833 in 1928, almost a third of what he paid for the house, but he bought the house 25 years previously. Obviously, these cars were super expensive. Kipling was a keen motorist and enjoyed exploring Sussex by car. For instance, he took friends to Bodium Castle. The charming sandstone house is the former home of the British author. Kipping's house is at my back and we are entering a small lovely garden. To my left there is a nice tea room where people are drinking a cup of tea and the garden. So this is the garden. This was painted by Edward Pointer, who was Kipling's uncle. <coughs> and you got... 
it was given the Nobel Prize in 1907 for literature. He got £7,700, mm. so £7, I think it was. And he used that money, for some of that money, to landscape the garden. Mm. So that's, as you, as you see it now, with the pond and the land. Was, the pond was a, a boating pond, um, out of the front of the house, or the back to the side of the house. Um, this, you can actually see it's covered up. There's a little paddle boat they used to um, paddle about him on that. On that oh. and the family, the kids. When you go to the exhibition room, if you see the guest book, um, you look down the names, if it says FIP, that means Belly Pond. <laughs> By the way, Kipling was the first English language writer to receive the Nobel Prize. His strong association with India is reflected in oak furniture, Persian rugs, and artifacts displayed in this room. Siberia marked over here. Part of Asia. Rudyard and his wife Caroline Kipling fell in love with this property at first sight. Nest is in the Sussex Weald. His sense of romance and seemingly unchanging history appealed to Kipling. This property remains very much as it was when Kipling lived and worked here. And now we are going to the very heart of this house, which is his study. Inspiration. He'd lie there waiting for what he described as his demon to come to him, so the ideas to come to him. Um, and so sometimes they did, sometimes they didn't.
and quarter of them on India. You see, you see quarter of people. Related to India, because obviously they would have a huge connection with India. Born there, you know, worked there for But it's that was restored in 1973. But it's it's uh, the ship uh, is um, dates back to 1720. So it's a shipbuilder's model. So and it was rigged uh, at, Liverpool, at Liverpool. So three masted um, ship there. So Catriana, the name. But it was restored in 73. So yes. And the one over there is a model of the Cutty Sark. Right. <laughs> During the 1914-18 war, Kipling was a correspondent and he wrote officially for the Royal Navy. And what's here? Various ornaments, a medallion, some keys. Jenny, when was the last time you've been here? Oh, like ages ago. I can't remember, Carty. Should be exciting <laughs> coming again. I mean, we used to bring friends here when we came to stay. Mm. Leather hangings depict birds and foliage. The decoration was inspired by Indian chins designs. If you can talk with crowds and keep your virtue, or walk with kings nor lose the common touch, if neither foes nor loving friends can hurt you, if all men count with you but none too much, if you can fill the unforgiving minute with sixty seconds worth of distance run, yours is the earth and everything that's in it, and, which is more, you'll be a man my son.